Hey guys, I'm in the middle of cleaning up and reorganizing my work area and I thought I'd take a break and talk a little bit about resistors and how I'm organizing them. When I started out, I um, didn't really have much in the way of resistors, so I went on eBay and ended up buying some assortments of inexpensive metal film resistors from China. Uh, that's what all these blue guys are you've seen me use on many projects in the past. Work fine, never had a problem with any of them, um, but I've got a few issues with them. Uh, one, while they're blue and uh, a, little, a little jarring when you look at uh, vintage electronics and see these bright blue resistors, but also because they're one percent they have an extra color band. So if you're not used to seeing this, this one is orange, orange, black, orange, brown. You might have trouble figuring out what the heck value is that. Well it's three three zero and then three more zeros. So it's not thirty three K, it's three hundred and thirty K and that brown stripe means one percent. Now, some of these others, the colors are not that distinctive. Sometimes red can be hard to distinguish from orange. And uh, some of the other colors are uh, equally a little hard to read sometimes. Well, after using those for a few years, I came across these guys. You've seen me use more recently. These are Vichy resistors, the PR series. These smaller guys are PR01. These are actually 1 watt resistors, even though they look rather small. And the bigger ones are PR02. They are 2 watt resistors. So, I really like these for a few reasons. Uh, they're metal film, very stable. Brown color, which is more in keeping with the old ones, and these two watt resistors are actually just about exactly the same size as the old half watt carbon cap resistors that we see so often. And they're five percent, so you just have the three bands. So this is red, violet, brown, 270 ohms. The colors on these are more distinctive, brighter, I find them easier to read. Also, quite inexpensive. I see these on sales now and then at Allied Electronics. Um, I got a lot of these. If you bought them in bulk, say if you buy a hundred of them, you can get them for as little as two or three cents a piece. So I have, over time, loaded up on the plenty of them, and that's what's in all these bags here. So if you're starting out from scratch, I have a few suggestions. One, sure, go onto eBay and get some of these assortments. I say that because, hey, let's be practical. If you're starting out and you're not sure what you need and you're going to be working on a bunch of projects for a few bucks you can get hundreds of resistors. But if you're only going to work on a few projects, um, you don't mind spending a little bit more money or uh, you, you care a little bit more about the appearance, or maybe they're higher end sets and you want some higher quality name brand stuff, by all means, check out the Vichy resistors. And there are certainly other brands that are perfectly fine, Zycon and, uh, and so on. Um, and then uh, as a matter of storage, so if you buy an assortment, and Vichy might have one for the PR series. I haven't come across it, but I don't know for sure. But uh, sometimes you get assortments. All these happen to be capacitors. But I imagine you can get resistor kits too that come in a similar thing. And you could store them in this. So you've got your various values in little bins like this. Otherwise, well, you can certainly keep them in the box you get them in. And uh, <laughs> dig through them, which I uh, certainly have done to find the values that you need. Now, something else I also suggest you're doing. Whenever you order parts for a project, if it needs three 10K resistors, get five, get 10. I think it usually the, the, the breaks are like a 10, 25, 50, where the price will be reduced, maybe from five cents a resistor to four cents a resistor. 
But it's also nice to have some extra on hand in case you make a mistake or for future projects. So that's how I ended up accumulating a lot of these uh, between sales and buying extra for projects and just anticipating certain values as, as you work on projects you're going to realize that you will need a lot of for example 1k resistor 10k resistor 100k resistor maybe not so much 36 ohms or other kind of what I think of as oddball values trust me as you look at schematics more and more work on projects more and more you realize that certain values are used a lot more than others However, that also depends on the era and the type of devices you're working on. For example, solid state versus tube, old versus new. For example, the really old radios with the dog bone resistors, they couldn't make dog bone resistors less than about 1K or so. So you just, they just didn't have them. So if they needed to, they would go with wire wound resistors. Um, but generally, you just don't encounter them that often. Whereas if you work with transistor stuff, it's far more likely to see low, lower value resistors in the tens or hundreds of ohms or a few, or a few thousand ohms. Whereas tube stuff can certainly get into the mega ohm range. All right, so you can have a pile of resistors like this and dig through it. In case you're wondering what happened here, well, they spilled out. So I, I've got some fun to uh, dig through all those. One, to pick out the type I'm not going to be using anymore, and also to uh, figure out uh, and resort the values out. All right, so that leads us over to this. Zoom back out a little. This is a parts organizer. So up top we got smaller drawers, down below larger drawers. Well, I spent some time thinking about the values I use and how many drawers I've got, and I came up with a system. I used a spreadsheet and printed it out, and then I cut them up and put labels on the drawers. So here's what I came up with, and this worked out for, let's see, we've got five rows and six columns. And if you're wondering where did I get these values, 430, 470, 12K, if you look up a list of all the resistance values using the 5% type resistors, this is what you'll end up with. And I have it ranging from 1 ohm to 22 mega ohms. This will also work for 10 and 20% resistors. If we were to use 1% resistors, you're going to have more oddball values that might fall in between some of these values, and you'll have to adjust this accordingly. But for what uh, stuff I work on, which basically ranges uh, for everything, uh, this will work out very well for me. And uh, I suggest if you're going to be working on the kind of stuff that I do, and you've got... Uh, an organizer with 30 drawers. I think this will work out well for you too. For the most part, I'm using the Vichy PR01, PR02, and 03 series, and that's what I'm putting in all these drawers. However, there's a problem. They only make them up to 1 mega ohm. So, for resistor values above that, I have to get a little more creative, and I've got some metal oxide and some carbon film, and even some carbon comp resistors, which tend to drift with temperature and they're noisier. By that I mean, um, yeah, resistor can actually generate noise. The, the particles it's made of when they heat, they generate noise, and very sensitive circuits can pick it up. Some of these are uh, high voltage resistors, for example, this is a 6.8 thousand volt resistor, 
yes, resistors do have a voltage rating. You try to put a thousand volts across one of these small one watt resistors, it can actually jump right across. Comes in handy for electrostatic TVs. Now, in spite of all my careful sorting and organizing, it's easy to make mistakes. For example, here are one mega ohm resistors, brown, black, green. Well, I might reach in and pull one of these out and think it's a one mega ohm resistor. I see a brown, a black, and a green band. However, no, more closely, the camera would focus. That is brown, green, black. It's a 15 ohm resistor, not a one mega ohm resistor. And there's always the remote possibility, I don't think I've ever had it happen, but it's not impossible that these could be manufactured wrong. They might have slipped through, and uh, they're not the value they're supposed to be, especially if you buy these sort of no-name and expensive blue ones. So I always double-check with an ohm meter before I install it in a circuit. And down below here, I'm going to put my power resistors, which are very much unsorted right now. Got the old ceramic sand-filled type. Got some of these metal encased jobbers, aluminum housed for mounting on chassis to dissipate the heat. And some of these vitreous enamel ones with a nice sort of like porcelain coating on them. And these guys which is uh, some type of uh, silicone coating on them. Totally unorganized now, just thrown into drawers. So that, uh, <laughs> So the other problem uh, with having them unsorted like this, well, I should say the number one problem is when you need to find something, you waste a lot of time looking for it. So even though, yeah, it's tedious, i got to go through all these bags and sort them all out, make my life a whole lot easier down the road. So that's why I'm taking a little break from projects to get this stuff organized, save myself time and headaches. And I'm going to be doing the same thing for my capacitors. So I'm going to have one of these just resistors, one of them just capacitors. I think. Maybe film, plastic film, and mica and ceramic in one, and then maybe electrolytics in another, something like that. I should also mention that I do have some carbon comp resistors in my stash. These are not new old stock though, these are actually newly manufactured ones, or at least <laughs> I do believe they were recently manufactured. They are still made, they're used in niche applications, but they do have shortcomings. They don't dissipate heat as well, that's why these are larger than those PR01 resistors. They drift in value with temperature. As the years go on, they tend to drift up in value, I believe because they absorb moisture from the air, and they do create some internal noise that can be picked up in really sensitive amplifier circuits. So why the heck would I keep them on hand? For appearance sake. For very special projects, or very special radios and TVs, if I'm going to go to the trouble of restuffing the caps and preserving the look, Occasionally, I do want to retain the resistor look as well, but for sure, the newer carbon, uh, sorry, metal oxide and metal film resistors do outperform these. So that's about it. Perhaps not the most exciting or sexy of components but worth giving a little bit of thought to, I think. Finally, here's a closer look at the specs on those Vichy resistors I've been talking about. Here is the 1 watt variety, the PR01 series, rated for 350 volts. And here are specs for the PR02 2 watt, rated for 500 volts. If you're starting out, I highly recommend you get the PR02s. You can always use a higher wattage resistor in place of a lower wattage. And these are pretty much identical to the very common half watt carbon comp resistor. 
So you'd be able to use these to replace well, half watt, one watt, and two watt resistors. There is a PR03. I don't think I have any handy right now. Oh, here's one. And you can see they suddenly get a whole lot larger. It's only one more watt, but they are considerably bigger, and I believe these are rated for 750 volts. They do cost a bit more, but also a good option to have in case you need to replace some 3 watt resistors. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this little talk on resistors. Just a quick little side note for those of you who have seen me do plenty of handheld shaky videos. Yes, I do own a number of tripods. But uh, this, this style, this less expensive style that I've used for most of my videos, uh, I find a little annoying because you have to screw this into the camera and then extend legs and screw around with it a bit. Well, more recently I got this nicer, more professional tripod that has a quick release on it so I can go between handheld and the tripod very easily. It uh, is taller and it's got this nifty crank feature so I can change the elevation very easily. And I think it's got even more features that I don't even know about yet because I did not get a manual with it or anything. I got this at a yard sale for next to nothing.